Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you a sneak peek at what is now available in PHP 8. Essentially, PHP 8 is an optimization both at write time and run time in terms of a language. So what, what do I mean? First of all, it has a just-in-time compiler, which will help improve performance at runtime when the scripts are actually running. And it also has what I would characterize broadly as syntactic sugar, basically shorthand methods of doing common things that we like to do in code. So in this video, I'm going to give a quick walk around from the php.net website and give you my commentaries. And in my upcoming videos and my new PHP 8 Pro course, I will get into more detail about some of the PHP 8 features that are cool. So let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Cloudways, which is a managed cloud hosting platform. Cloudways offers peace of mind and flexibility through the choice of five cloud providers. So the way Cloudways works is that it is a layer that sits on top of DigitalOcean, AWS, Linode, uh, Google Cloud, etc. And they just make it really easy to provision and to set up a server. You as a developer don't have to worry about all those details. Cloudways is an ideal platform for agencies, small and medium-sized businesses, and e-commerce because you, the developer, can focus on business instead of managing multiple servers by yourselves. Use promo code STEFAN20 and get up to two months of free hosting with $20 credit. They have all kinds of capabilities built in. Great performance, SSD, 7.3 and PHP 8 available, built-in caches, optimized stack, HTTP 2 support, good security, firewall, one-click SSL installation, auto-healing servers. It gives you a lot of freedom. So there's vertical integration, block storage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Very good platform that takes care of all the nitty-gritty of server management and provisioning so you can concentrate on your app development. Once again, take a look at Cloudways, a managed cloud hosting platform. This represents modern day server implementations. I highly recommend this style of hosting for your applications. So here we are at php.net, it's a place to be. So I'll just read the release and then we'll go into a few examples. PHP 8 is a major update to the PHP language. I should point out before I go on, let me point out that um, PHP 8 apparently will break WordPress installs. So um, I'm always very wary about switching from a major version to, a next, to the next major version. So when we went from PHP 5, I think it's 5.6 to 7, uh, it broke stuff in Studio Web. Not major, but still we had to you know, make sure we had to check check stuff up. We had to update things, you know, because it broke. Minor versions, you know, 7.0 to 7.1 typically won't break stuff. So going from PHP 7 to 8 will probably break certain apps. And of course, I never, I never update to a brand new uh, major version. I would wait to 8.1 coming out and I think it's out already. It is out actually already. So the 8.0, I'm sure it's great, but 8.1 even greater because usually in the subversions you get some bug fixes. Anyway, uh, so if you're a WordPress dev developer and uh, just make sure you check that before you do the big upgrade to PHP 8. All right, let's get jump into it. So PHP 8 is a major update to the PHP language. It contains many new features and optimizations, including named arguments, or is it very cool? Union types, very cool. Attributes, constructor property promotion, also cool. Match expressions, no safe operate, just in time compilation, I guess. And improvements to the type system, error handling, and consistency. So let me just show you. Named arguments basically allows you to specify only the required parameters in a function or method. Uh, you can skip the optional ones. And the arguments are no longer order dependent. For example, a PHP 7 example, HTML special chars, very commonly used function. So you have to explicitly add all this in, all the arguments, whereas with 8, you just have to specify the particular arguments that are required. So let's go on. So here's another example. So instead of having to use this 
code here, a PHP doc annotation. To set this up, you can just do it directly, very simply, much less code. So, you know, instead of all this, you got this little cleaner, easier to read. Let's go with constructor property promotion. This is to me is the coolest. So instead of all this boilerplate code to create a class when you're defining and initializing your properties, you just do it like this pretty simply. So instead of having to use the, the this, you just go like this and it's kind of implied. So it's kind of cool, I, I like that. Uh, union type, so a union type, if you don't know, it allows you to save a particular variable, it can accept n number of data types. For example, for this variable number, you set it to either int or float. It could be one or the other. The advantage of this is that you can control your data types on your member variables, but at the same time, you can add some flexibility there. For example, in this situation, you accept an int or a float for the number. Anyhow, let me go on. Oh, the match expression. So basically, this is just a shorthand way, a bit more to than that. So instead of using switch, which requires all this code, you can just use a match expression. So it's just, a, again, I call that syntactic sugar. So uh, yeah, yeah, so there's much more to it, but let me just go down. So we have just in time compilation. PHP introduces two JIT compilation engines. Tracing JIT, the most promising of the two, shows about three times better performance on synthetic benchmarks and 1.5 to two times improvement on some specific long running applications. Typical application performance is on par with 7.4, well, PHP 7.4. So anyway, you can look at some of the data here. So that's about it. There's a bunch of other things as well. I'm still trying to decide in my course exactly what I'm going to cover. But, uh, you know, as a course creator, I have to tell you, one of my jobs, well, number one is to simplify. Number two is to figure out what's important to learn or to teach, rather, and what's not important. Languages are vast. So much in there most of the functionality, most of the features of a language you won't use on a day-to-day -day basis, so it's not necessarily you know it all. And uh, when you become a crusty old nerd like me, you start to forget stuff too. So anyway, I hope this is useful. Thanks for watching the video. Bye-bye.